Welcome to the broadcast, everybody. My name is Trevor, and I am going to be hosting today's domain name training. So uh, this is primarily for you guys who are just starting a site. One of the first steps involved in, in starting your site is getting a domain name. And really, you shouldn't get your domain name until you know what your niche is going to be. So if you can say conclusively that you're going to be selling um, women's fashion accessories and you know that's going to be your area of emphasis and your niche, then let's get a domain name. Or if you can say conclusively that you're getting into the business of selling whatever that niche is, rings, men's rings, or food storage, or you know whatever your niche is, you got to have your niche first. Don't register your domain name unless you know what the website is going to be about, okay? Some of you guys prematurely get it. You start your legal business, you have a, a like a legal registered business name like, you know, Trevor's Internet Ventures LLC, and you think that you're going to name your website the same thing, and you're not. So that's that's going to be, you know, Trevor's Internet Ventures LLC is going to own and operate this uh, this new domain name, this website name that we're going to create. Okay, so that's the background. Let's get right into uh, first of all, just what a domain name is. Who, for those of you who who are here with me live right now, when I say domain name, uh, what am I talking about exactly? If somebody asks you, "What's your domain name?" What are they asking? I'm going to keep some notes right here. We don't want to assume everybody here knows what a domain name is, especially if you're brand new to this. What's a domain name? Okay, that's a pretty good def definition, Daniel. It, uh, I'll use that. The part before the .com. I, but I, I would argue that the .com is part of your domain name. So I'll amend that. And let's just say uh, we'll, we'll call it uh, the name of your website or um, the web address of your website, right? Whatever you are, www. Whatever you are, com, right? That's your domain name, which, as we just established, is different than your legal business name. Now, just to illustrate very quickly, um, let me pull up a free whiteboard here. Here we go. Think of think of your business like this umbrella, okay? So this is we're gonna pretend like this is our here's our umbrella. Okay. All right, you with me on this? You proud of my uh my artwork here? Okay, so right, this is your this is your umbrella. Okay, so this well, let me change the color here so this makes more sense. This this umbrella company up here at the top. This is this is your legal business. So um, maybe I can do this. Let me let me erase my detail here. I know this detail is great, right? But let's erase this because this is where I want to write my business name. Okay, that was way harder than it needed to be. Okay, so this might be, uh, let's call this, I'll use my last name here. This will be Ship Ventures. LLC. Okay, this is my business name. I don't necessarily need a domain name for that. What's going to happen is this Ship Ventures LLC, this is who my suppliers know me by. When I file taxes at the end of the year, I'm going to file it under Ship Ventures LLC. But here's what happens I, I'm going to run this brand new website and it's going to fall underneath my umbrella. So, um, you know, we'll call this XYZ dot com and this company this domain name i just registered is owned and operated by ship ventures llc and then maybe i've got uh whatever 
my other site, maybe I've got a jewelry site called pearls.com. That's my domain name. Also ran underneath the umbrella of this Ship Ventures LLC. But this Ship Ventures LLC is not customer facing, okay? My customers know me as my domain names right here. They don't know me as Ship Ventures LLC, okay? That's that's an important distinction that we need to make here, okay? We all on the same page there? I feel like we are. Um, good. Stop me if we're not. Okay, we're going to go on to the next thing. So we know what a domain name is and how it's different from our legal business name. It's like our customer-facing name. Here's some general criteria for a domain name. If you if you tell me, and we're going to use several examples here, but let me give you some, some general guidelines or general tips, okay? Number one, your domain name needs to be short. And I'm going to put that, you know, we'll say we'll say relatively short, okay? Longer domain names aren't the best domain names. Shorter is better if you can get it. So short, it needs to be relevant to our niche. So when I read it, I have some idea of what, what you're going to be selling. Number three, we want to try to make it to where it's kind of catchy. Number four, no hyphens. Number five, dot com only. Okay, and I'm going to explain more of these. So short, um, I, I used to say try to be like 15 characters or less, but that's that's a bit too restrictive. Just just not something too long. I don't know, 20 characters, 15, 20 characters is getting a little longer. But if it's a really good name, I may I may approve it. So shorter. In other words, if you're selling food storage, I don't want you to be called something like this. You shouldn't be my be my best food storage outlet shop for you.com. Do any of you guys see anything wrong with this domain name? Count the characters on it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 9, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's like, that's like 30 characters of a domain name, right? Why is that a problem? Well, who's going to remember, A, how to spell it? And who's going to rem remember it, period? If I just told all of you guys what this is and then deleted it and asked you to repeat it back to me, I'll bet none of you could. My best food storage outlet shop for you dot com. It's terrible, right? It's way too long. Um, it needs to be relevant to your niche. Now, this top one is relevant to the niche. If you read this domain name, does that sound like does that sound like you know what I'm going to be offering you? My best food storage outlet shop for you. Yes. So that that would that would fit into this criteria. It is relevant, right? But what if what if our domain name were called this? Let's say let's say my niche was um whoops. Let's say my niche was food storage. But what if my my domain name was the outlet superstore.com? Okay? Is that relevant to the niche of food storage? No, right? It's very generic. That's not going to work for that reason. We want it to be at least related to the niche, okay? Does that make sense? I guess that's pretty clear, isn't it? Okay, but let's look at criteria number three. How catchy is this domain name? The outlet superstore.com. Not very catchy, right? Catchy is something that uh, I guess it's a little hard to define. How would you guys describe a catchy domain name? What does that mean exactly to you guys who are here with me live? Okay, let's and let's do this as an example. I'm just going to put over here our niche is food storage, okay? Yeah, maybe Peter, that's not bad. Maybe it's a little quirky. Right? How about something memorable? Let me put that in in parentheses here. Something catchy is also something pretty memorable. You tell it to me once and I and I can remember it. Yeah, that's it, Jody. You are reading my mind exactly. Jody says you want something that will stand out and can be easily remembered. Yep, 
It's got to be catchy and memorable. Daniel, sounds like a phrase one would use to describe the area. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, okay. We'll come back to this in a minute when we're brainstorming some ideas. No hyphens. In other words, I don't want a domain name that looks like this. Um, blue Mountain Food Storage dot com. Okay. Try, stay away from hyphens. You know, a better domain name is not hyphenated, but it would just be Blue Mountain Food Storage dot com. Okay. That's actually not a terrible domain name. Why? Is it short? Not particularly, but the word food storage isn't exactly short. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 11 characters in and of itself. So pairing something with that is difficult. You know, what ultimately would be the best domain name for this would just be foodstorage.com, but I can guarantee it's not available. We'll talk about that here in just a second. So Blue Mountain Food Storage, that's not bad. It fits all the criteria. It's a .com. Now let me talk about Fiverr just a second. One thing you'll notice if I pull you back here to GoDaddy, which we'll talk about more in a sec, but look at the options you have for registering a domain. There's more than this too. Uh, these days you don't have to do just a .com. You could do a .com or you could do a .net or a .online or a .live or a .shop. So in other words, I could call myself Blue Mountain Food Storage dot online or Blue Mountain Food Storage dot live. Blue Mountain Food Storage dot shop. We do not recommend you use any of those alternative endings. Rather, everything should be dot com and that's and that's uh that's just a hard and fast rule we do with you guys. Uh, because we feel like you can find a pretty good dot com if you if you brainstorm and and work hard enough. I know a lot of them have been taken, but you can still find good ones. These other ones are very forgettable. I mean, a lot of times if somebody says, hey, what's your domain name? And you're like, oh yeah, it's Blue Mountain Food Storage dot shop. You know what they're gonna do when they get home to look you up? They're gonna type in Blue Mountain Food Storage dot com and not find you, right? Don't use the other endings. I promise you, you are better off to use the dot com, okay? We all on board with that? Okay. So there's my short list right there. Let's go back to it real quick. That's my short list of general tips when deciding on a name for your website. Um, now, let's let together as a group here, let's come up with some ideas for this for this niche. I guess we already threw out this idea right here, but let's pretend for a minute we're food storage. That's the niche. Here's what I would do if I were trying to come up with some kind of a name for the site. I would first go to GoDaddy.com. Why GoDaddy? And why not Register.com or OneInOne.com or any other domain provider out there? Um, no reason other than this is just what I'm used to. Uh, domain names, you don't really get that much better of a deal from anywhere. It's all pretty much the same thing. Yes, they cost a little bit of money but it's not much money. It shouldn't be more than, you know, 15, 20 bucks a year tops. They're very cheap. They're very inexpensive. And so because they're all pretty inexpensive, I prefer to use GoDaddy. And so that's what I'm going to recommend to you. I have no financial incentive in that recommendation. Okay. It's just, that's just what I've used. Okay. So what I would do is if I'm you and I've got my niche, right. And I'm coming to come, I'm coming to GoDaddy to figure out what my name is going to be. I'm going to start with Typing in an idea here. I'm typing in foodstorage.com to see if it's available. Why? Because might as well just check, right? So I'm going to hit search domain there on the right hand side of the screen. And was it available? No, it was not. It says, sorry, foodstorage.com is taken. Okay, fair enough. So we're going to try something different then. Now you can, some of you guys are more creative than others, but if you really like foodstorage.com, maybe you tried foodstorage shop.com, right? 
search again. And lo and behold, look, it is available. Okay, it says, yes, your domain is available. Buy it before someone else does. Okay, and you'll see this right here. Okay. Now, GoDaddy's, GoDaddy's going to try to sell you stuff all along the way. Okay, right now they're like, hey, it's for two ninety nine, And then in small print it, right here, if you're reading this with me, it says when you register for two years or more. First year price, two ninety nine. Additional years, fourteen ninety nine. So in other words, that's a little promotion they're running. But really, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good deal. But send it, but but so they're also like, well, but wait a minute. If you if you add food storage shop dot us, um, you can get that for a dollar. Or if you look below here, let me scroll down to this right here. Now they try to sell you all the endings. It says get two and save 68% right here. Get foodstoreshop.net.org.info all for just 17 bucks. Don't You don't need any of these upgrades, guys. Let's keep our lives cheap and, and our, our budgets happy and do foodstoreshop.com or yeah, foodstoreshop.com. Now, it's not a terrible domain name. It's not a great domain name either. I think we can come up with something better. I'm a really big fan, and I think this is the best way to come up with a good domain name. I'm a really good fan of pairing your niche with a noun. Here's what I mean by that. So I would say, so food storage, like this, is my niche. Foodstorage.com is not available. So you can start pairing it with words like shop or store, right? Food storage, shop.com, food storage, store.com, food storage, outlet.com, food storage, warehouse.com, right? And there's, there's, there's lots of different synonyms for, for store and shop. But I don't think that's as memorable. I mean, it's one way to do it. I like the idea of, of putting some sort of um, unique noun next to it. So I use I already used the example. I said, why not use um, maybe mountain plus or mountain food storage dot com, right? What does mountain have to do with food storage? Uh, well, well, nothing really. It's just part of the name. And and as you can imagine. You know, in the logo, we would have a, a little mountain right there next to our, or in our logo, right? Um, if mountain food storage is not available, maybe I can call it greenmountainfoodstorage.com. All this is all, so what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm building in a brand, right? I'm creating some kind of a brand inside of my domain name. Now I've got greenmountainfoodstorage.com, and I'm imagining in the branding now this really nice, modern looking green mountain next to food storage to create a brand for my company. If we don't like the word mountain, let's come up with something else. A lot of times natural things work really well, depending on your niche. So I could use the word mountain or sun or moon or tree or leaves or leaf, right? You could do like, we could call this, you know, redtreefoodstorage.com, right? Anything wrong with that? I don't think so, right? Imagine a little logo with a with a um a red tree in it. Right? And then I could come over here and I could look up redtreefoodstorage.com and I could put it here. redtreefoodstorage.com, search again, and sure enough, it is available. It says redtreefoodstorage.com is available for 2.99. Okay? That makes sense, guys. So it's very simple. I mean, if if you think of your brand and pairing a noun next to your your niche inside of your uh, inside of your domain name there it, it it actually does make a lot of sense. All right, so now I'm going to have you guys actually let me let me before I have you guys help me with a niche. Um when you're registering a domain name Actually, I'll get to that in one sec. Hold on. Let's let's instead let's switch gears for just a sec. We're going to say our niche right now um is going to be men's rings, okay?
All right, so you guys got that? Men's rings. So if that's our niche, based on what we've talked about so far, I want you guys in, in live chat here to start listing ideas for domain names. I'm going to put out the obvious one. The first thing I would think of is mensrings.com, right? If that's available, I'm just going to register it. Let's put it in. Now, notice I, I can't actually put a, an apostrophe in a domain name. You can't have punctuation. Capitals don't matter. So it doesn't matter if I'm a capital N or a M or a lowercase M, right? None of this matters. Capitals don't matter. Um, apostrophes you can't have in a domain name. You also can't have this symbol right here, the ampersand. You can't have that. Okay. All right, so let's just search it. Oops, hold on. Mensrings.com. Okay, so it's saying that it's been taken, right? So that's not going to work. And in this niche, we're going to be selling, you know, men's wedding rings. Um, from wedding, from wedding rings, just to, to any normal ring that, that a man might wear. I'm, I'm not a ring wearer. I guess I the only ring I ever wear is my wedding ring. But other types of men's rings, whatever. Um, give me some ideas. What might we call this website? Mike threw out an idea. So Mike thinks maybe, how about real? Realmensrings.com. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in our list here. Hold on. I really hate this this uh this little word counter app that I use. It always gets slow. Hey, I'm not gonna put up with this. Hold on just a sec here. Sorry, minor technical detail. Word counter is not working. Let me bring up something else here. That's way too small. All right, hold on just a sec. Sorry, guys. My program froze up on me. But be listing some ideas for a domain name here while I'm while I'm grabbing a document I can work on. Okay, so we've got mensrings.com not available. Uh, realmensrings.com. What else do you guys have? Ed, you said edsmensrings.com. So using your name, that's a possibility to use that as part of it. Greatmensrings.com. Okay. Yeah. Ringsformen.com. Yep. Good. I like that. Pete. Big Pete's men's rings dot com. So it's clear you can use a name in it. Keep going. Any men's rings dot com. Sorry, and I'm I'm not reading all of them just because they're they're coming in like crazy here. Uh the capital letter is just because it's forcing me to capitalize it here. That I mean the capital doesn't mean anything. Think brandable for a minute, though. I mean, great men's rings, any men's rings. That's good, but it's 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 not super brandable. Think think of think of something that would brand it really well. Think of your logo for a minute, like we talked about a second ago. How about kings? 
rings.com. Okay, I just came up with that. Um, and what I'm imagining here is, you know, with my logo, I've got a, you know, a king, you know, use use like maybe a crown or an actual picture of a king or like a really ornate ring, right? So, and that's that's kind of catchy and it sounds nice, right? It's it rolls off the tongue well, tongue well, kingsrings.com. Or another you know, let's think of another example of a noun that that pairs well with it. Something related to men, maybe, right? Because that's going to be your your uh, your main demographic. Um, I don't know. You know, you could do like blacktierings.com. And then like the logo I could imagine would be like a little, um, you know, maybe you have like a little bow tie, you know, with with a ring around, a, around it or something, right? Or just a little black bow tie and then it's called blacktierings.com. What does a black tie have to do with anything here? Nothing, right? That's not the point. Or, or uh, how about this one, tophatrings.com, right? And then you have a little top hat as a logo. So it's it's a little more classy. It's a it's a classier looking site. So so if you get a little more creative in your ideas and you come up with these, I mean, again, top hat. What does that what does that have to do with anything? We're doing nothing, right? But we can we can build a brand and a logo around that. And what's interesting about going with something like that. Is is the domain's almost always available? If I come back here to GoDaddy and type in tophatrings.com, you'd be surprised if that's not available. It is, and it's short, it's catchy, it's relevant, it's all those things that we like. That's kind of clever, Daniel. Make the queen happy rings.com. Okay, so that, that could work. It's a little longer than I'd like, but it's not a bad idea. Fingerjazzrings.com, RockSolidRings.com. I like that one too. Manly Rings. Anyway, you guys, you guys get the point. And and what I had always advise my clients to do is come up with your top two or three that are your favorite that you've searched in GoDaddy, and email it to your coach and let them help you decide. So you're not totally off your hinges on one, or or, or they catch something awkward about it, or it's misspelled. I've I've had a few guys misspell something in your in your domain name the biggest the biggest culprit being this word right here that word gets misspelled all the time it gets spelled like this right be careful about your misspellings if you misspell your domain a lot of times you know a lot of times you can um um, get stuck with it because GoDaddy will only change it within like the first 24 hours for free. And then if not, you're stuck with it and you just got to register a new one. So make sure you, you spell it right. Now, when you go to register it, and I'm going to finish up with this, when you go to register your domain name, okay, if you go to GoDaddy, um, it's very simple. Let's say this is the one we're going to go with, tophatrings.com. Let's select it. Okay. Once it's selected, let's continue to cart up here at the top right. And I'm going to start the checkout process. It's going to ask if I want to make it private. Do you want to make your domain private, everybody? Yes, you do. Okay. You want privacy protection. You don't need privacy and business protection. You only need privacy protection. And what that does is it prevents people from finding out uh, that you're the owner of the domain. If you don't do personal privacy protection, um, your your phone number, name, and email are going to be associated with that, and you're going to get a ton of um, unsolicited marketing calls that you don't want. So it's a little extra with GoDaddy. It's like eight bucks a year. It needs to be made private. You do not need a website builder. You do not need web hosting. You do not need an email account. The only thing you really actually need 
is privacy protect protection. No email, no hosting, no other upgrades. Sometimes GoDaddy will say, hey, but we'll submit your domain name to all of the most popular search engines for three bucks a year or something. And that's, that's garbage. You don't need that. We're only using GoDaddy as a means to um, simply just register and reserve a domain name, okay? Now, once you have it registered and you've purchased it, it's it's purchased on a yearly basis, so you'll just have to make sure to either put it on auto renew where it charges you every couple of years. Oh, and you want to do it for two years usually, so keep that in mind as well. So let me just write this down. So two years. Um, we want privacy protection, um, no upgrades, no email, no search engines, no hosting, no web builder, et cetera, no upgrades. Your coach needs the following. One, your username two, your customer number, and three, your password, so that they can change some settings, okay? So once you get it all registered, please send them that information right there, username, customer number, and password, and they will make the changes, the necessary changes, so that your GoDaddy or your, uh, your website's good to go. Because what we have to do is we have to connect that newly reg registered domain name to your uh, Volusion Builder, your Volusion account, and it's easier if the coach just goes in and does that. So get them that login information, let them make that change, and then you should be good to go. Domain name's done, and, and we can finally move forward on the rest of our website. But I got to tell you, guys, the domain's important. Like, let's let's give it some time. Don't sit down for a few minutes and just get frustrated because none of your ideas are available. You are going to have some that aren't available, and that's okay. If you do what I taught you how to do and get creative with nouns and brands as you're coming up with ideas for your domain name, you will come up with good ones. And then if you still can't, your coach can help you, but we feel like, you know, most of you guys can do a pretty good job, okay? So that's it, guys. That's that's my domain name training today. Um, oh, one, one last thing. Before you register your domain name, it might be wise just to go to Google and, and look to see if somebody has something or owns something very close to it, okay? Because if they do, if they've got something that's very close, sounds almost identical to yours, except for, you know, you just have a couple of little things different or, you know, you added shop to the back of it. It's like, let's say you're in the pets business and 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 you, you wanted to register um, PetSmartStore.com. Well, you can't do that, right? You'll get you'll get hit with copyright stuff because PetSmart already exists. You can't just do PetSmart Store and expect to uh, maybe not have a problem with a competitor. Make sure your domain doesn't sound too close to an existing competitor, and that'll save you some headache in the long run. Okay, that's it. That's plenty. Guys, good luck with your domain names. I hope that was helpful today, and we will see you guys all um, next time for some more training.